Hello Dungeon Masters. Today, I decided to continue with our recent jungle adventures. Since last week's map got my brain ticking. Last we left off, the players had discovered the location of a group of three pyramids. They eventually cleared out the current occupiers of the local overworld and worked out how to unlock the light-based puzzle to open a door into the pyramid's internal dungeon. Now, they descend the stone steps to the first floor of a large dungeon run inside of the ancient structure. I wanted this floor of the dungeon to be filled with a variety of traps to encourage a slower pace of movement in the darkness. Also, I chose to have another puzzle and at least one room where a large fight could take place. There are several floor-based pressure plate traps. These will trigger poison bolts to be fired through narrow openings. There will be an underwater maze to navigate whilst the players hold their breath. To make it deadlier, I decided it would be filled with undead piranhas that will harass or eat anyone who risks the swim. We will supply an alternate route that takes our players over a Takeshi's Castle style obstacle. There will be a stone balance beam over some water filled with our piranhas as before, but also spears visibly sticking out of the wall to perforate our players. To make it a little spicier, I have added a set of rocks on the safe wall that will knock them into the water if triggered. If they do fall in the water, they will need to swim back to the start of the balance beam. Obviously, an intelligent use of magic and abilities will make these puzzles much simpler to solve. But that's part of the game. Some puzzles can be trivial when you can cheat and use magic and special powers. Okay, so as always, I will give a little descriptive text for you to use for the players entering the pyramid, and then a little for the noble burial chamber at the end before the players make a choice about which door they want to open to proceed further into the pyramid. I decided to give them this choice so later on I could have the party come across another staff somewhere else in the world and return to this location and do the much more dangerous dungeon dive on the opposite side. I hide the staff inside one of the golden sarcophagi. Opening any of them will trigger the big battle they have been expecting. So, do you want to see more of this dungeon? Leave me a comment to let me know if you want to see a deeper level inside of this ancient pyramid. Okay, so let's give you some description for entering the pyramid. Descending into the depths of the pyramid is a journey itself, a passage from the known world into a realm of mystery and ancient secrets. As you step through the newly opened door, the air shifts around you, carrying with it a weight of centuries-old whispers and the faint echo of forgotten footsteps. The passage ahead is dimly lit by the soft glow of ancient torches mounted along the walls. Their flickering flames cast dancing shadows that play tricks on the mind, obscuring the true nature of the surroundings. The walls lined with intricately carved symbols and hieroglyphs tell tales of gods and kings, of rituals and prophecies lost to the sands of time. The air grows cooler as you begin to descend the stairs deeper into the heart of the pyramid, a stark contrast to the humid embrace of the jungle outside. The sound of your footsteps reverberates off the stone walls. Each bouncing echo seems to last longer the deeper you plunge. Occasionally, the passage opens into a small chamber, the purpose shrouded in mystery, Altars adorned with offerings of long-forgotten civilizations stand silent vigil. Their significance lost to all but the gods themselves.
carvings of mythical beasts and deities gaze impassively into the darkness, their eyes seeming to follow your every move. As you venture deeper, the passageways narrow, the walls closing in around you like the fingers of some ancient guardian. The air becomes heavy with the scent of earth and decay, a testament to the time that has passed since these corridors last saw the light. Okay, and now let's give a description for that final big burial chamber. Stepping into the grand burial chamber of the Forgotten Folk is like entering a sanctuary frozen in time. A solemn space where the echoes of a bygone era still linger. The air is heavy with the weight of history. Carrying whispers of the past that seem to reverberate off the ancient stone walls. This large room seems to show some signs of wear and tear as some of the structure has collapsed most likely due to the shifting of the earth. The chamber stretches out before you, vast and imposing. Its walls adorned with intricate carvings and faded frescoes depicting scenes of royalty and reverence. The ceiling, lost in shadow, seems to stretch endlessly overhead. Aligned along the length of the canal are twelve sarcophagi, each a testament to the nobility and power of those who rest within. Ten of these sarcophagi are plain and unadorned. Their surfaces are still smooth. Though humble in appearance, they must have been high-ranking nobles to have been buried in this great pyramid. Flanking the far southern wall of the chamber are two sarcophagi of a different ilk entirely. Crafted from gleaming gold and adorned with intricate filigree, they stand as monuments to the wealth and status of their occupants. The golden sarcophagi seem to catch the flickering light of the nearby brazier, casting shimmering reflections that dance around the chamber like phantoms of a forgotten age. The braziers themselves, ancient vessels of flame, stand sentinel over the room. Their flames, though subdued after burning for countless years, still cast a warm, flickering light that bathes the chamber in a dim, ethereal glow. Shadows dance and sway with the gentle movement of the flames, casting shifting patterns across the stone floor and walls. As you move deeper into the chamber, the air grows thick with the scent of age and decay, mingling with the faint aroma of incense that still lingers in the air. The silence is palpable, broken only by the soft crackle of the braziers and the sound of your own footsteps echoing off the stone walls. The sarcophagi are flanked by two marble altars. They appear to hold a similar recess carved into both. If the right object is placed inside, it looks like it will trigger a device nearby. The shape of the groove is long and like a staff. It appears that the unique object once placed inside will lock into place. So there are the main descriptive points I would use for my players when they explore this dungeon. I don't really describe every room they enter unless they ask for it, but I like to describe the points of interest so they imagine something as close to my original idea as possible. What do you think of the new video format? Do you like these descriptions? Are they helping you plan your next game? Or would you prefer the map being made with just some music to listen to? I really enjoyed making the wall look like there are spears ready to stab, even though from a top-down perspective you would never see it. I also liked planning the route for the underwater maze. If you use Fog of War in your games, it will be invisible for the players. They will likely think it's a straight swim. 
but it turns out to be nearly three times longer. I hope they can hold their breath long enough with their fishy distraction. I know the traps I have made aren't as deadly as some I've seen, but I like to think that your descriptive work will assist the trap in appearing more deadly than it is. Not that being lost underwater and drowning whilst being eaten alive by undead piranhas or being skewered by spears is a fun experience. At least it isn't the classic rock falls and rolls after you until you outrun it or die, which I've never liked as a player, so avoid as a games master. Feel free to add in your own inventive traps to your maps and share your great ideas. So what traps do you use in your games? Do you plan them into your maps or do you do something else? So this map took me around one hour to make in real time, when it isn't super speeded for your viewing time. So hopefully it inspires you to have a go and make your own dungeon dive in the humid jungles of your worlds. I wanted to take a little time in today's video just to thank you all for your support, your likes, shares and subscriptions. Making these videos weekly is tough, but knowing that people are really getting some use out of them really helps to drive me to continue doing it. I really cannot wait for Dungeon Alchemist's new update, as being able to change room shapes and heights around will really help me customize the maps to make them look the way I like. If you want to get access to the maps I make, then you can always take a look at my Patreon. I also forgot to mention that our community has a Discord where we hang out most nights and play games. So if you want a fun place to hang out and game with like-minded folk, then feel free to join us. I'll leave a link to our Discord below. As always, please help us make more videos for you. It's free and easy. Hit that like button and sub if you want more. Leave a comment below to tell me what you would like to see next. And as always, may the dice ever be in your favor.